Vox, why drugs cost more in America. Prescription drug costs more in the United States than anywhere else in the world. One big reason why is America's particular system for how drugs get to patients, which is unlike almost any other countries. But it's also because the American prescription drug market is also so profitable that the money it generates powers the entire global pharmaceutical industry. Very interesting. In 2014, Savaldi became the first drug to completely cure hepatitis C. Here's how it got to market in, for example, the UK. First, a government agency had to decide that Savaldi was safe and that it actually worked. Then it was evaluated by a regulatory agency to see if it was worthwhile. Are there too many side effects? Is there already a similar drug? Is there a cheaper option? Savaldi was deemed worthwhile. Next, they negotiated the price. In the UK, the government buys the stock of medicine for the country. That means they're usually able to get a lower rate, kind of like a bulk discount, which keeps prescription drugs cheaper for UK citizens. In almost every developed country besides the U.S., this is what the system looks like. Uh, I don't know about that, but we'll, we'll let the video play. Safety evaluation, assessment of whether the country needs it, price negotiations, sold to patients. But that's... In the U.K., that is how it works. Interesting. I mean, fairly. I believe so. According to Vox, yeah. how does it work in the U.S.? First, the drug is evaluated for safety, but that's it. If it's safe, they can sell it. End of story. Drugs are sold by the drug companies to patients, usually through insurance. And since the U.S. system lets them sell it for any price, Gilead, the company that makes Avaldi, charged Americans more for it. When it first came to market, the entire treatment cost $84,000 in the U.S. Whoa. In the U.K., just about $58,000 U.S. dollars. That's still a lot of money, but it's a full 30% less. It's still a lot of money, though. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> it really gosh. is a lot of money. <laughs> Especially with... The taxes are higher. I don't know. A quick comparison. I actually like this video because it shows. Yeah, you'll see. These photos are from protests in the U.S. against the high price of EpiPens. And these are photos from protests in the U.K. over the lack of access to a cystic fibrosis drug called Orcombi. So high prices or access? High prices mean you get better access, but it's, lower pricing it's means you get less access. Yeah. So it's which one? But then if I you're like poor... That. You still don't have yeah. access. You know access. <laughs> That's because when there's a committee that determines whether a new drug is worthwhile, sometimes they say no. And when they negotiate the price, sometimes they don't come to an agreement and hit a standoff. That's what's happening with Orcombi. Both systems require trade-offs. Regulated drug markets tend to make drugs more affordable, but some drugs are completely unavailable. And while the U.S. has more drugs technically available, they're often too expensive to actually afford. Very logical. Yeah, it's, but it's, it's so frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> the drug companies, last clip from Vox, why drugs cost more in America. But the commonality between these two systems is the drug companies. Developing new drug products isn't cheap, and they're for-profit businesses. If Gilead didn't think that researching and developing a hepatitis C cure would make them money in the end, they might not have. And with these regulated markets keeping costs down, the only place drug companies can really make their money is, you guessed it, the U.S. <laughs> Americans are essentially subsidizing the cost of drugs for the rest of the world. In other words, a big part of why prescription drugs are more expensive in the U.S. is because they're cheaper everywhere else. Very interesting. I really hope that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be very upset. But yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting. But... Drugs are very expensive here. Yeah, it kind of makes sense, though, too. Mm -hmm. But research is really expensive. All the yeah. equipment. So it's a tough balance. But mm -hmm. at the same time, these companies spend a lot of money on other things, which we've covered. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so. What do you think? AskHealthyTalkShow.com. NBC News. New regulations require drug companies to include price in TV ads. New regulations will require drug companies disclose list prices for any medications that cost more than $35 a month. Xarelto, the first to include its price at the end of this ad, $448 a well, month. Yeah. Today, Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar saying drug companies must be more transparent about their pricing. If they're afraid that people will be scared off by their extortionate drug prices, lower your price. It's that simple. <laughs> but the drug industry says the list price doesn't reflect what patients actually pay out of pocket and could perhaps discourage them from seeking needed medical care. We don't see it as being a problem. The list price does not reflect what patients will actually pay out of pocket. Yeah. Well, why don't we make it a little less confusing then? 
I know. Why <laughs> Why is everything such a secret? Too? Yeah. Because then you really can't negotiate and you have no idea of anything. Yeah, you don't know where you're going into. You know, knowledge is power. Yep. And we reported on that a while ago. I don't yeah. Know. It's, still, it's still making the rounds, so figured we'd revisit it because it's pretty funny. Science Daily. Opioid exposed newborns may react to pain differently after birth. Researchers from Penn State College of Medicine found that as soon as 24 and 48 hours after birth, babies who were exposed to opioids prenatally reacted more strongly to pain and scored higher on skin conductance test, which measures the electrical differences in skin in response to pain or stress. According to the researchers, op opioids block the release of norepinephrine, a chemical released in the body during times of stress. When the baby is born and is no longer exposed to opioids, the baby experiences a spike in norepinephrine and other chemicals and hormones in the body. This can result in such symptoms as irritability, eating poorly, sweating, fever, and seizures, among others. The researchers enrolled 37 newborns, 22 with prenatal opioid exposure, and 15 healthy controls for the study. To measure the baby's reaction to pain, the newborns were video recorded while undergoing a heel stick, a standard procedure that most newborn babies undergo to give blood for screening tests. To measure skin conductance, a non-invasive device with three electrodes was applied to one foot. The device measure electri electrical conduct conductance in the skin, which can change when... Norepinephrine. Yep, norepinephrine boosts sweat production. I lost lost my train of thought. After the data was analyzed, the researchers found that the babies exposed prenatally to opioids had higher skin conductance and reacted more strongly to pain during and after the Hillstick procedures. Additionally, babies who had been exposed to opioids continued to be stressed after the procedure was over and they were wrapped and tucked in. I found that last part very interesting. Where mm -hmm. they felt the continued pain. Yeah. Like they're hooked. Yeah, that's really it's, disturbing. It's extremely just, it's yeah. so quickly and just. Oh. Well, I mean, that's why they're trying to identify what babies do have this opioid addiction already because mm -hmm. they need all this extra support because of the issues. Yeah. You have to be ready. And like you said, knowledge is power. Yeah. Knowledge is power. And if you're enjoying all this knowledge and hopefully the power you're gaining, hopefully you find value. So healthytalkshow.com slash support to help support us financially. Yep. Or we appreciate feedback. Let us know what you like, what you don't like. We need feedback in any form. Ask at healthytalkshow.com. Yep. Send nudes. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. For more Healthy Talk Show, please consider subscribing to our podcast over at healthytalkshow.com slash subscribe. It's free. Twitter and Instagram at Healthy Talk Show. Drop the W. We record the podcast live Mondays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time over at HealthyTalkShow.com slash live. Love and light.